Does he look like he's had Botox, Lisa? Botox. <laughs> <laughs> he looks very fit and healthy. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 interviews that turned into fights. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at TV interviews that escalated into vicious arguments, walkouts, and even physical altercations. Which dramatic interviews had you reaching for the popcorn? Tell us your favourites in the comments. Number 10. Joan Rivers Fights Back when you invite a comedian onto your show to discuss their new book, it's probably not the time nor place to grill them on animal rights. Especially if you're talking to Joan Rivers, because she's just going to rip you to shreds. Uh, even with your fashion critiquing, while it's very mean in some ways, people it's can't not wait mean. to it's hear not what you mean. Have to say. Really? It's not, it's not mean. mean? In this CNN interview, the host put Rivers back up from the outset with a leading line of questioning about plastic surgery. You know, this whole interview is becoming a defensive interview. No! Uh, are you wearing leather shoes? Yes! Then shut no, up. I'm talking. She then hauled her over the coals regarding her show Fashion Police, her irreverent sense of humor, and her love of fur. You know, I'm going. I really am going because all you have done is negative. The questions are valid but they are delivered with a smile so fake it seems calculated to cause offence. Eventually, Rivers snaps, shots are fired, and the star exits stage left. My book is funny. I wear fur that was killed 15 years ago. I work for animal rights. Stop it with, and you do this, and you're mean, and you're that. You are not the one to interview a person who does humour. Sorry. Number 9. Oliver Reed versus Shelley Winters British actor Oliver Reed became well known for his chaotic chat show appearances, especially in his later alcohol fueled years. Quiet! <laughs> Can we end the show now? Please be quiet for a minute. Yes, sir. Good. I, I am not really used to this. However, this particular confrontation was caused by his backwards opinions and a deliberate attempt to provoke. Reed bantered back and forth with Shelley Winters during their appearance on The Tonight Show in 1975. In fairness to the American actress, she didn't rise to the bait for almost the whole episode. Shh! Quiet, woman! She'd actually left the stage for the night when Reed started on about the evils of women's lib, but Winters made sure she returned to teach him a lesson. Reed later described the altercation as a giggle, saying, She's a showman, and I'm a showman, and that's our business. Number 8. You're the Tosser, pal. In 1997, the Bee Gees appeared on the late night talk show Clive Anderson All Talk. Anderson was known for his irreverent style of hosting, resulting in some dramatic confrontations over the years. Because that's perhaps the most distinctive thing now, that, mm. that high pitched. Oh, the false idol. That's it, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Were you working with Mickey Mouse at the time? <laughs> <laughs> the most memorable was his run in with the Kings of Disco. The host's repeated jibes at his guests' expense did not go down well with the eldest Gibb brother. Anderson mocks the group's musical style, their solo efforts, and riffs on their former name, the Tossers. Before we became the Bee Gees, we were Lay Tossers. Uh, yes. Which we thought was... Yeah. Um, um, You'll always be Lay Tossers to me, but I don't know. <laughs> Gibb's growing irritation is plain to see, and it's only a matter of time before he snaps. <laughs> In fact, I might just leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never had anyone walk out before, but... Uh, well, uh, we are a tosser, pal. <laughs> Uttering some parting words of wisdom, the singer storms off stage, leaving his brothers to hurry after him in an act of solidarity. Number 7. R. Kelly has a tantrum. Disturbing allegations concerning R&B artist R. Kelly began appearing back in the 1990s. However, it wasn't until the release of the 2019 documentary Surviving R. Kelly that he began to be held accountable. In an interview with CBS's Gail King, the I Believe I Can Fly singer flew right off the handle. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me. Ranting and raving in front of the calm and collected interviewer, Kelly gives an uncanny impersonation of a toddler throwing a tantrum. 30 years of my career! Y'all trying to kill me! You're killing me, man! It's entertaining, but pretty dark when you put it into context. This is not about music! I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it! Y'all just don't want to believe the truth! Kelly has since been sentenced to 30 years in prison. 
but here his crimes are just beginning to catch up with him. The panic is plain to see. Number 6. Quentin Tarantino vs Krishnan Guru Murthy Krishnan Guru Murthy has always been a bit of a wind-up merchant. But why are you so sure that there's no link between enjoying movie violence and enjoying real violence? I don't, I, well, I'm gonna tell you why I'm so sure. Don't, don't ask me a question like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not biting. His probing questions, delivered with a provoking smile, seem designed to get a rise out of his celebrity subjects. In an uncomfortable interview with Robert Downey Jr., he pushed the actor almost to the point of tears and the discussion was cut short. This earlier face-off with Quentin Tarantino is more fun though. And I'm shutting your butt down. The Django Unchained director doesn't take kindly to the negative slant the interview is taking and he lets us know it. And I'm you're, you're saying very no. And I'm shutting you down. It all gets a bit heated, but when Guru Murthy changes back, Tarantino snaps back into friendly mode and everything's wrapped up with a smile and a thank you. Number five, Kim Woodburn on Loose Women. Celebrity Big Brother loves a big personality and back in 2017, Kim Woodburn's explosive bust-ups stole the show. The woman is clearly an icon, but the CBB house can be toxic and she didn't have an easy time of it in there. So the only way it gets because... TV is because she comes out and makes is controversial. Mm. You've no talent. That's the only way you get Excuse TV. Me. Nevertheless, 18 months later, someone thought it was a good idea to invite her onto Loose Women to face up against her former housemate, Colleen Nolan. The show was uncomfortable watching. The panel closed ranks against the 76-year-old and made no attempt to make amends for past hurt. The segment may have caused a stir, but it was misjudged and nasty. Jeez, I don't want to draw a line on you. You don't want to. I will pick... never forget what the likes of her and the seven others put me through. It also received a flood of complaints. Number four, Jim Everett versus Jim Rome. It feels like risky business to taunt a six foot five NFL player straight to his face, but that didn't stop radio host Jim Rome. Jim, good to have you on the show. Good to be here, Jim. Thank you. Check that, Chris Everett. Good to have you on the show. You know what? You know, you've been calling me that for about the last five years. About two years, actually, Chris. Well, hey, you know what? Let me, let me say one thing. The presenter had a running joke going, where he referred to Jim Everett on air as Chris, after Chris Everett, a female tennis player. When the American footballer came in for an interview, Rome continued the joke, and Everett asked him to stop. You know, we're sitting here right now, and if you guys want to take a station break, you can. But if you call me Chris Everett to my face one more time... I already did it twice. Better, you better you call one more time, we better st take a station break. In a scene that will be familiar to anyone who's ever had a sibling, Everett utters the classic phrase, If you say that one more time, and Rome responds accordingly. I think that you, you probably won't say it again. I bet I do. Okay. Chris. Next thing we know, the table's been flipped, they're both on the floor, and we're cutting to a commercial break. Number three, Emu attacks Parkinson. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't know to look. <laughs> if there's one way to get away with bad behaviour live on telly, it's probably to become a puppeteer and say the Emu did it. Rod Hull was a fixture on UK television screens in the 70s and 80s, always accompanied by the bad-tempered bird who loved to bite people. In one iconic interview, Emo laid into Michael Parkinson with great enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Parky was powerless to stop it, as live on air he was obliged to maintain the magic and a sense of good humour. However, after a prolonged attack, the broadcaster looked as if he was ready to strangle somebody, and his patience was clearly running thin. <laughs> it made for great TV, though. Number two, the children's names row. A name for me is a shortcut. It's and a really does, efficient does... way of working out what class that child comes from. Do I want my children to play with them? Formerly a contestant on The Apprentice, Katie Hopkins has become infamous for her controversial and inflammatory views, from comparing refugees to cockroaches, to suggesting that dementia sufferers should be euthanized, she courts publicity by spreading hate. Back in 2013, she made headlines after inciting a class row on This Morning. You judge children? Yes. On their names? Yes, Holly. Hopkins suggested that children's first names are an indicator of their social class. 
She says she doesn't allow her own kids to play with children with lower class names. Holly Willoughby's reaction says it all, really. However, Hopkins undermined her own argument once she got into the specifics, citing geographical names as common. She failed to see the irony of her own daughter's name. Oh, so Brooklyn or London. Your or... child's called Indian. Yes, but you know, <laughs> it's, that's because she's. It's not... Number one Grace Jones on Russell Harty. Model, musician, and actress Grace Jones caused ratings to soar after her appearance on the Russell Harty show in the early 80s. Can you smell her at no, all? No, I've got my own body odor perfume. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and keep it on a slightly higher level if we may. <laughs> after a long week and some bad cocaine, Jones wasn't in the best frame of mind for a live TV show. Throw in some last-minute changes and a bad-mannered host who repeatedly turned his back on her, and you get the perfect recipe for drama. Don't turn no, your no, back on me anymore. Um, I can't look at you. Ah. <laughs> now, hold, hold, hold. The exhausted and disoriented guest dealt with the situation by repeatedly thumping the presenter in the back. What, are you going to tell me why? Because men always make the fashion for women, that's why. In her autobiography, Jones writes, Hardy was rude. I wasn't going to put up with it. I lashed out on live television. It takes balls to do that. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.